No, I've been good. I've been Badebulungi. Life is good. How are you doing? Era de nyabo. Era de sebo. Omusi bia mutie yo. Jetuli mutie mutia. Jetuli enkuba etonya. Ah, am sana gwa kandi mutung. Oh, musana gwaka. Feno twakavwa twakavwa musama kati tuli mu four. So na yemu okay. sama na fe munange wafu musana gubadde gwake nkoko ngazibika majiga boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bonnie Kibuka. On my podcast, The Ugandan Boy Talk Show, I've had an honor to sit down with some of the most incredible hearts and minds from Uganda, like Miss Uganda Oliver Nakakande, Jura Mozo Job, the Executive Director of Jura Model Management, Pastor Wilson Bogembe, and many, many more. On this podcast, you get to hear raw and real life stories of their journey, what they've been through, and the people that have inspired their journey so that they can make a difference in ours. Listen to the Ugandan Boy Talk Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Join the journey soon. Anyway, people think. Congratulations on your baby. Oh, you know, Mano Molunji. I sent her photos on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, no. Uh, I love the chicks. She's so cute. I know. I got blessed. I got blessed. Um, the Sebabi names are the one I'm wrong, but no, God blessed me. So I love her. I love her. She's she's amazing. She has definitely changed my life, like for the better. Yeah. You know, like always when I come back home, there's something to look forward to. You know, like it's it's been exciting. So how is fatherhood so far? Fatherhood, I think that's like the hundredth time people have asked me that question. Actually, before even we got into the podcast, there's some guy who wants to the podcast about fatherhood. And he's reached out to me. He's like, I follow your podcast and I know you're a new father. I want you to be my guest on my podcast to talk about fatherhood. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. No, but like fatherhood is good. Um, it's something you don't prepare for. You, there's no way to prepare for it. You know, like it's something that you just have to learn on the job. So it's good. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to change a diaper, but I finally did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It took me a few months to change a diaper because she was super tiny. She looked like like a sandwich. Yeah. And I didn't want to break her or something. So I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. But no, it's good <laughs> um, changing diapers and changing her clothes. And they grow really fast, right? Yep. Yeah, they do really grow fast. Um, I pick her up from daycare. She started going to daycare because the American life, banang. I want to be Uganda when they see me talk about decay and stuff like that. But the American life, you work and somebody yeah. has to watch a child. So she started going to daycare and I pick her up after work. But fatherhood is good. She's good. really she's really small. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't want my baby to go to daycare like I, I just did. a few months after being born. Yeah. I don't like that, but you know it's you have no you have no yeah. choice, yeah. I hate it because somebody else is raising your your daughter. Like, she spends Literally. more time there than she does um, here. But no, okay. it's been good. How how has been your life? Um, the last time I've talked, I talked. I mean, we've been talking on social media, but like talking to you physically was. See, you cannot do it, but maybe the last time I had you on the podcast. But how how have you been? Uh, good, actually. But before you ask me how I've been, I want to compliment your studio because last time we talked, I know uh, you were not in a studio setting like that. So it looks so amazing, and I think it's uh, such a great accomplishment for you. Thank you. You know, such a beautiful space. I saw some videos of you like setting it up and mm -hmm. all the, placing all the cameras and yeah. microphones. I feel like I want to come there and just <laughs> do the podcast in the studio itself I know. because I think it's a whole different feeling. That's why when we talked the other day a while back and you're like, I'm going to be in America. So I thought like you'll be maybe close by, but then I found out you're going to Boston, which was a bummer because I would, I would love and having podcasts in the studio feel different than on the internet. I've recorded a few in here with my friends that live close by. I would definitely love that. 
and that's one of the how points. Far is it, how far are you from Boston? I don't even. I think it's a, if you're driving, it's like thirteen hours, thirteen hours drive. But um, you can definitely fly. I I don't know. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you off camera and see what I can do. But yeah, it's kind of pretty soon. Okay, no worries. But we'll yeah, miss the person and the baby then. I know, but I'm gonna bring her to Uganda next year. So yeah, that would be exciting. I don't know if you'll be there, but I want to take her to Uganda so she can see. Over in Dubai, place. I know. I've always wanted to fly to Dubai. Actually, I've never had a, a layover in Dubai. I've always gone Amsterdam never and Belgium. Dubai. No, I've never been, and I want to. Okay, when you, if you fly Emirates, you will definitely stop over here, yeah. and uh, they can even give you like you know a complimentary hotel and yeah. stuff like that. I think it, obviously, Nina Seleb, I have a celeb in Dubai. Why not? <laughs> I don't see myself as a celebrity. No, you're, you're, my, you're my celebrity friend. Go up, I'm a celebrity. 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 i so besides that, I've, I've been good. I've been uh, working on so many things. I think from the last time we uh, we had a podcast, I don't know if I had graduated then. Mm -mm. I think I was still in yeah. school. So of course I did graduate with honors and then I decided to go back to uh, pursue my master's, of course, in the, in the same field. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing a course called uh, Master's of Science in uh marketing communications and brand management so i'm all around marketing and branding and pr and all that stuff yeah and communication so i'm still at the same university at middlesex university and i'm still doing the same stuff i used to do i'm still a model here in dubai and um, i also do work as a uh, humanitarian with my uh foundation back home the oliver nakakande foundation so if you've been following you can see that i'm mm -hmm. always between Uganda and Dubai, between Uganda yeah. and Dubai. And I love the fact that it's only like five hours away, so I can try to manage everything. Yeah, so yeah, that's that, what I've been up to. That is something I've noticed, like uh, Uganda and Dubai, and sometimes you post on your stories, like, guess where I'm going? 100%, and sometimes 99% it's Uganda, like, for the time. And I respond to some of those because I'm like, she's going to Uganda. But then sometimes it's been like on vacation or something like that. But yeah. no, I've I've loved to follow you, and I'm blessed to even know you and uh, be able to see what you do. And actually, be the last time you were here was before you went to Miss Grant, and that was amazing. It's been a long time. Wow, oh, it's know. been a long time, been... and that was before you became American. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Catherine <laughs> Gamba, you just hit me with one and two. I tell you this and you tell me this. Yeah, oh. we, have, we have so much to celebrate. By I the know. way, how does it feel to be American? I'm going to interview you for a bit. I right? know. you've uh, Ever since we started, you've been interviewing me. It feels like this is... Uh, I'm on the hot seat. No, it feels good uh, to be American. Um, it's not it's something great. I was... I, I don't know. Let me see how I phrase it. It's not something... I was planning or I planned to do. It wasn't part of my dreams to become American. But it's definitely, I, I celebrated it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, it definitely helps. It's a relief because you feel like you belong. Before, right. you, you didn't feel like you belong there. I was like, yeah, have you seen your have a citizen? If you have. But now I feel like I belong here. And when I right. pay taxes, I know I'm paying towards where I leave my home, but like before you pay taxes and you're like, I'm not even American. Why do I even have to pay all these taxes? But it feels it feels good. It felt good. It was a relief. The process to go through that, it's not easy. It's not easy yeah. at all. So can imagine. Yeah. Please bring bring back our passports, the Ugandan passports. I'm actually applying for dual citizenship right now. I'm in the process to get dual citizenship. So I'm keeping my Ugandan passport and my Dagamon too. And my US <laughs> passport. Okay, I have well, congratulations on that. Honestly, I Thank think you. Um, 
much as you think maybe you didn't uh, plan for it, but I think it, it's something that everyone, especially there mm -hmm. in the U.S. or when you live in the diaspora, you, you, you always want to have that sense of belonging. Yeah. And and it's peace. something that we actually lack in the Middle East mm -hmm. because we do not have anything called citizenship. Yeah, we don't. So yeah, you I remember you mentioned that. that you mentioned that the last time yeah. actually we did a podcast. You mentioned so that. I have been living in Dubai for almost seven years now. And I think by now, if I was like in any other country that guarantees like uh grants uh, citizenship like the US, Australia, Canada, I'll have the passport. But but it's not the same case. But you would wonder why am I here? Mm -hmm. It's it's just amazing. There's so many reasons why I'm stuck here yeah. and I'm not looking at any time <laughs> yeah no it's definitely good to have that belonging to know like you belong somewhere and it comes with a peace of mind you know like it's not something you're worried about because even when you're not illegal in the country even if mm. like you have a paperwork there is that <clears throat> fear that you have when that time comes to become a citizen uh the fear of they have a test they give you you have to pass this test and there's like mm -hmm. a, a hundred questions about american history you have to memorize them so quick gamba even through the process of it am i going to pass that it's it's something to worry about but once all that is done you can mm -hmm. even throw away all the it's, it's like finishing high school you no know, and when you burnt all the books <laughs> and you graduate <laughs> yeah so you graduate so yeah definitely it was it was um it was amazing but yeah Congrats. it's thank you Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't even think I've talked about it a lot. Uh, I remember I was recording a podcast with somebody when I was going for my interview for that. I did pretty good. I did actually good because I answered all the questions. So they ask you 10 questions. You're supposed to pass six. When you pass six of them, then then you, you become a citizen and then you take all. Um, actually, right now at this point, I'm not considered a Ugandan. What you mean? Because yes, so much. Money in America. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> it came off wrong, but that's not what I meant. Oh, it's like when you become an American citizen, you have to denounce your previous citizenship of oh, the really? country. Yeah. So they make oh, you, wow. when when you're taking the oath, they make you denounce your previous citizenship. So when, when I became an American, I had to denounce a Ugandan because America does not consider dual citizenship. But Uganda mm. does. So when I'm applying for dual citizenship, it's only going to work in Uganda. In America, you're supposed to be American. Like, okay. Yeah, be a, be a Uganda, see. Uganda. So, but now we'll be see if we can take you back. We will see. We will look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, no, Kodeka, so like when I when I travel to Uganda, because I'm planning to travel towards the end of the year, I have to buy a visa to get to Uganda. Yeah, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm very excited to buy a visa for my country, Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Well, um, yeah. So you were so. asking from the last time we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went for Miss Grand. It was amazing. It was such an experience, honestly, because um, it wasn't a new experience because I had done Miss World before. But I did this because I honestly wanted to. I connect with people from around the world, different people, obviously, from around the world. And also the feel of getting back into pageantry, for me, it was something that I always wanted to do, like, again, uh, even though right now I'm done with, with pageantry. But it was it was awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I remember. You, 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 Uganda! <laughs> Uh, yeah, that went that went really viral, especially yeah. in Asia, because I, I I had no idea that Ganda means beautiful. Really? Yeah, Ganda. So when I say you, you, it's like I'm saying like you, you are beautiful. Mm. So it's like you, 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 Ganda. So it went viral. Asians loved it so much, and they were like, "Oh wow, you know." So it's kind of raised the Ugandan flag like up there because mm -hmm. everyone was like, you, 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 Uganda. Even right now, when you see like the Asians, uh, the Asian fans commenting on my post, they always bring it back and back and back. Yeah. Like they love it. So and I remember a video you shared, the one, a little girl who reacted to that, I think. On, on yeah. Instagram. That was amazing. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, the, the little girl, there was, there was a lot of challenges. It was it was such an amazing mm -hmm. experience, honestly. I had, I had fun and I met... A lot of friends and actually i managed to get 
two of the contestants to convince them to move to Dubai. Oh, really? Yeah, so nice. they're actually here with me right now in Dubai. So You should convince them to move <laughs> to Uganda. To, to you know, it's hard to convince them because I don't live there. Yeah. No, I but also Dubai comes very easy because like Dubai itself as a brand, they know how to market themselves so well. Like everyone is like talking about Dubai. It's like paradise, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But I love Uganda and it's, it's the paradise, but it's hard for me to tell somebody that, you know, you better come to Uganda. It's yeah. paradise when I don't live there. No, that, yeah, I understand what you're talking about. And yeah, even in America, people, Americans talk about Dubai. Oh, I want to go to Dubai for vacation. Everybody. So it's easy to to promote that. And We have a lot of Americans here right now. Yeah. They're buying a lot of real estate, yes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so so like like Dubai. Yeah, so for me, I can't chikumi. Ku chikumi. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Oliver, um, it's so good to have you back on the podcast. I've, I always love talking to you. Even when I'm not talking to you, just... I love listening to you talk. You're talking to oh. other people. You're talking like anytime you're speaking somewhere, sometimes I'll call live. I jump on when, when I have time or I'm at work. But anytime I hear you speak, I want to listen because there's a lot of wisdom you share for every category, oh. like to the girls, to the guys, to the country, to anybody. So it's like a message to everybody. So every time I get an opportunity to have you on the podcast, that's why most listeners, Ababa, they were following and they know that there was a point in time when I had you, like, I think three times on the podcast. This one might be like a fourth time. So every time there's an opportunity, I'm like, I'll take it because I can't stop having you on the podcast here. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate uh, the support as well. Uh, I've, you know, even when I'm not on the podcast, I know that you're always supporting, you're always sharing, commenting and, you know, uh, texting and we're always like you know mm -hmm. uh, behind all the, the scene so i really appreciate the support honestly and i can't i can't count how many times i've name dropped you on the podcast for things i'm talking about even like my recent release on wednesday i released an episode with miss uganda uk and she was right. just talking about that scene of uh, no like watching you in uh, grad and people look up to you people who have, have seen you and oh. just making references of what you've done in life or even just being miss uganda so i've i've name dropped to you a few times and just giving maybe <laughs> something you talked about on the podcast like oh i remember oliver talked about this this and that so right. i appreciate yeah. that but today and we were supposed to do this recording a while back um, I was actually going to do Instagram live because I wanted to just do a live. It makes it things easier. I don't have to worry about editing. But then something happened in Uganda. They stole your phone. For the second time. The second yeah. time. <laughs> this wasn't the first time. Come on, what about just me? I miss Uganda. People don't. I know, right? Like, <laughs> people, uh, the first time I had a 13 Pro Max. And actually, it happened when I was attending the Asphalt in December last year. And, um, you know, I was thinking we're in a VIP place. I don't think I should mention the place, but everyone that attended knows that it was in a five-star place. And I, I felt a, a sense of, you know, security and safety. And then the show is done. And then I placed my phone on the table. I was taking a, a picture with uh, Mr. Frank Gashumba. And he had his security there and someone taking our picture in, like, one minute, even less than a minute, like the phone is gone. I'm like, where is my phone? I literally put it here. So I started crying. Honestly, I was crying. And uh, I got over it because I always have a second phone, which is this one. This is like my backup, backup baby. Mm -hmm. And it helped me like, you know, backup like all the iCloud and stuff. So I was communicating with everybody. My phone is falling. Anyway, this time around, I was very careful with my phone because it had happened to me before. So I usually take, collect the kids and take them to like a kid's park and play and swim and stuff like that. So this time around, it was a fun day. I woke up, I'm like, okay, I'm free today. Let's go to the park. So we are lining up in a queue and I have my phone in my bag. And literally we were like in a queue and a guy literally passed me. And I didn't realize that when he passed me, he reached out to my phone at the same time and just took it away. So I noticed in like two minutes, because I'm always checking my phone, and I wanted to 
at that moment, I wanted to capture the videos and the pictures of the kids playing. And I'm like, wait, where is my phone? So I reached up to the bottom of the bag. It's gone. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I was freaking out. I reported to security. The place where we were, it has CCTV cameras. I was like, okay, thank God, there is cameras. I'm going to go as security to try to look at the cameras. And guess what? I walk into the office and they tell me, oh, unfortunately, the cameras are not working. <laughs> oh, the network is down. I'm like, oh my God. But let's look around. Do you, re do you recognize the guy? I'm like, if I see him, I do recognize him, but I don't think it's going to be sitting around here waiting for us to find him. Right. Mm -hmm. So we tried moving around the park. It's a Sunday and many, many people are there. So we fell to find the guy and I'm like, oh, this is me saying goodbye again yeah. to my phone. So that's how I, you know, I felt really bad because I had your uh, podcast mm -hmm. coming up. I had a couple of interviews online coming up and honestly, yeah. this is an eye for pin uh eight plus hmm. the camera is horrible yeah i understand <laughs> i understand um, so, no i no felt i felt record. really bad because i remember you reached out i was like hey let me see what i can do and you try to make it work and um it, it wasn't able it wasn't we weren't able to do it but i really understood and didn't try to push it or anything because i understand that situation every time i go to uganda but dang it it, it makes me sad i love my country but to live like you don't belong makes me sad you know like people really don't have sad. mercy like because even but at the same time when you look at the other side about the, the economy is not very good right now yeah. it's never been yeah yeah but um but anyway that was i was gonna do like a instagram live to review the book but i was so happy to see you do your book uh launch it was amazing people turned out at the interviews you did in uganda and uh, people buying the book it's amazing and me personally i read this book from front to the end and it's it's amazing I'm, i know a lot of message you talk about things you went through as a girl but like i feel like a lot of guys and there's a lot of lessons to the guys, the dads from this book. And there's a few lines like I, I highlighted that stood out for me, which I'm going to just okay. talk about as we go. There's a few lines when I was reading the book that stood out to me that I, I'm going to talk to you about. You've had time to review the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wrote the book, you, you know, but you've had time to talk about this book in different places with different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I was going to. Uh, read through but also i have a few questions about the book itself right. um it's it's amazing it was a good book and some parts got me really teary because i could relate to some of them i'm like i've talked to her and actually some of the stuff in the book if you if people go back and watch your first episode you did on here you were talking about your journey to miss uganda there are some things i was reading and i was like Oh yeah, she talked about this in when she was on the podcast. <laughs> so I could connect. I was like, oh, it makes sense. Now I remember. Because I know yeah. in the first episode we did, you talk about the death of your mom, but we didn't really go into depth on how it happened. But when you read the book, you read how everything happened and how it played out. Um, I know this is a question you might have received a lot from all the interviews you've done, but what inspired you to say, I'm going to put this in writing? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. Um, I was inspired by a couple of things, honestly, but most importantly, I was inspired by the stories of so many young girls that I got to encounter and talk to in Uganda, especially during my reign as Miss Uganda. So I figured that when the girls started sharing their stories, how they suffered in life and how they had to escape whatever they escaped, I was like, wait, these girls actually think that I didn't escape anything. I just became Miss Uganda all over, all over the sudden, and mm -hmm. all you, you know. So they just thought that maybe they can't become who I am, or they cannot be in the place where I am, or even more because there is more than Miss U, you know, being Miss Uganda. So I was like, you know what? The fact that I'm advocating for education, one way to educate is. First of all, we, we put things in writing. Reading books is one way that we can really, really communicate and educate. I know that where, where we come from, where I come from in Uganda, there is not, we don't have a huge reading culture. Right. I totally understand that. 
but also how are we going to break those barriers if we don't actually produce the books and the content for mm -hmm. our students to read so i was like you know writing a book as tiny as it is and actually i made it very small because of that reason is a great way to pass on this advocacy education and pass on the information and share my story to inspire the girls so that they can know girls and boys honestly and everybody mm -hmm. so that they can know that i also came from somewhere i didn't just i wasn't born with a crown on my head or right. i wasn't born like this i have a story so it was drawn from an to, to inspire basically mm -hmm. no yeah that's definitely amazing because that's something i talk about on the podcast every time even like not only miss you kind of not even writing a book but some people will look at instagram they'll see you in dubai living the life where you post, oh, I've achieved this, I've bought a house. But there is a story behind Oliver buying a house today. You don't know this part, like she went through that. But when you read it, it was like she went through this, and it might be the same thing you're going through right now. And then mm -hmm. it will give you hope that if she managed to go through this, she got to where she's at. But most people get that what they see on instagram is like oh my gosh i want that life i want to live like that yeah. why am i like why am i not like oliver right now but behind oliver there's a series of things events that happen so i re I was really happy that you wrote this book because it's ch it's going to change a lot of lives for everybody who reads it um I hope so. <laughs> yeah for sure what when you wrote this book i'm sure memories were coming back things you went through yeah. after you wrote the book what did you learn while writing this book while i was writing the book yeah what did you learn while you're revisiting these events in in when you're writing the book uh the thing is like when you are the actual character it's like you live like i'm living the life right so the story happened and it happened to me so me putting it into writing black and white it doesn't mean that I had forgotten about it before. Now I'm reminding myself. Mm -hmm. This story, every single time, is at the back of my mind. Right. So it's it's not like I was rethinking and oh, okay, going back. Okay, this happened. So all the all the stuff that you read in the book in the escape mm -hmm. is they live with me every day. Yeah. The fact that I where I grew up, my background, how, my home, how my mom raised me, and how she passed. Like every single detail you know mm -hmm. is the, at, always at the back of my mind but when i finished writing the book my team and i we reviewed the book and i'm like okay i don't think you want to release this book yeah i think i think i overshared <laughs> i don't want the people to get to know so much about me mm -hmm. like this because this is me literally saying the truth about myself and if you remember there were so many misconceptions about my biography. People were saying, oh, you were this, or no, you were that. So I wanted to make uh, to make it clear that this is who I am, guys, mm -hmm. and don't mix up things. But when I finished all this book, I was like, no, I'm not ready. And that's why it took me two years to mm -hmm. actually release it. That's why in that book, you don't see like Miss Grant, you don't mm -hmm. see all this stuff, because I was like, no, I'm not ready yeah. <laughs> to put it out. That is crazy because that was the question I was going to ask you. Um, but on top of that, add, adding to that, are there parts that you had to delete out of the book when you got to the review part? Is there something you were like, you know what, I'm going to take this out or take this one out? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, some people would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to delete out some parts because I was like, okay, the storyline is exactly like that, mm. but if we didn't twist it a little bit, mm -hmm. we should have, people would have connected the dots and like, yeah. okay, I think she's talking about this person, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think she's talking about this person. So I had to delete some parts, edit out some parts, but make sure the story still makes sense yeah. and still uh, stays relevant and tells the exact story that I want to tell. But obviously I had to delete out yeah. some things. No, yeah. Yeah. So this book has been out, I think, a month now. Is it a month? Yes, it's been a month. So it's it's supplied everywhere. You went to Uganda, launched it, and you have family in Uganda, some subjects in the book. What yeah. do these subjects think about the book? Or do you even know if the subjects that were in the book, if they have received it, what do they think about it? 
Uh, I don't think they have received it, okay. but if they have received it, then um, they should be happy because yeah. I did not like really mention any names or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they should be happy that, oh, she was actually very uh, protective yeah. of us. So mm -hmm. very well and good, especially the bad characters. Right. <laughs> yeah. But people like my dad, he's very um, illiterate. He yeah. doesn't know how to read. <laughs> he doesn't read. He doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. And when you read the book, you will know that I exposed mm -hmm. all, like, the way he was, honestly. Because mm -hmm. the reason why I wanted to put out his picture is because it's exactly how it was. And I wanted people to know that my mom played yeah. a huge role in my life rather than my dad, mm -hmm. which is the truth. Yeah. So, But the fact that he's not a reader, he will never get to know the book and read the book. So I'm, I'm not worried that anyone is going to, you know, yeah. be in trouble for anything. There's actually the part that I was looking at, looking for that you that stood out to me. I remember I highlighted it, and you were talking about like parenting, which was was yeah. pretty good. I wanted to talk about that, um, but yeah, you talked about uh, your 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 dad and how it was a struggle to relate to him. But later on, you talked about like you love your dad and you, he's your dad and you respect him. It could be hard. Um, having a parent who who doesn't care or who moves on with life and leaves her like that. I read that book and that's the part that stood out to me because I'm a dad right now. And for me, mm -hmm. that's how I connected with the book for you expressing what you were going through. I was like, how can I be a better father to my daughter? How can I not do things? like? And that's why I was saying at the beginning of the book, like, this book could be for anybody, whether your dad, whether your girl, whether your guy, whether you... There's a lot of different characters in the book, and there's a lot of lessons um, to learn. But do yeah. you, you you talked about your dad and some other subjects uh, or characters that were in the book. Do you know where most of them are right now, what they're up to? Uh, honestly speaking, some of them, I have no idea where they are and what they're up to, especially the people that hurt me the most. In the book, I am I try to stay away from them and all their negativity. But uh, like my dad, obviously, I know where he is and he's doing great. And uh, in case you're wondering, yes, I, I forgive him and we moved on. We're good now. Yeah. But still, like, let me give you as a, an advice as a father, mm -hmm. the best advice. Just be there. Yeah. Just be there for your family. Be there for your girl. You know, when I grew up, like now, I do understand that, you know, stuff happens. And then maybe between parents, you can you can separate. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But just try so much to stay in your children's life right. because they really, really need you. So I think for me, um, our my relationship with my dad was just damaged from when I was a kid because I was the last born and I, I was born into all this separation and uh fighting and all that stuff so i i just didn't even you know get a chance to be with him and know him and connect with him so i just saw him as a stranger when i like mm -hmm. when i got a chance to see him you know yeah and uh, obviously when parents separate and uh, the mother or you don't resolve your issues usually you're very bitter when the kids stay with their mom it's most likely they are going to take whatever their moms are going to tell them mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. so that is me I grew up my mom telling my mom telling me, oh, okay, you, she, she didn't tell me my dad was bad, but I, I saw some things, obviously. And then um, the fact that she was always taking me through school and I saw how much she worked so hard to raise money. I was like, wait, but the other kids, their fathers are taking care of their school mm -hmm. fees and they're, they're there. What about me? In fact, I remember, I think I was like uh, 17 years old. That is when my dad bought me my first dress mm -hmm. ever. And I, I, I didn't even like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know my size. Yeah. He didn't know my style. But this was him trying to come back now. But mm -hmm. it's kind of too late. Too late, right? yeah. Uh, but so, I forgave him. Uh, yeah, actually, that, that's the part I was going to talk about earlier. Because you talk about forgiving him. And we need to remember that. Like, there's a lot of people who hurt her us in life but i know it's yeah. it's hard i'm not gonna force anybody to forgive anybody it has to come from your heart to forgive but it helps you 
to be at peace with it. You don't have to think about it all the time. I found the line that I highlighted. Actually, people might think I'm lying, but I have my highlighter. When I was reading this book, I was highlighting every everything. Uh, it's, it was on page 37. I highlighted, say, the experience taught me how important it is for parents to love their children and constantly express it to them in words and actions. I highlighted that because listening to your experience growing up and as a parent, uh, you talk about express it in words and action. You just can't do one. You can't just say, oh, I love you so much, but you don't leave it. You don't act it out. Exactly. And that's something yeah. that I, I took out and I really liked that and stayed in in my heart. So, But there was Good. another line. Um, yeah, because I had a question I was going to ask you. Did you used to read when you were younger? Because you mentioned no. earlier that we grew up in Uganda. I used not to read. My school I went to, we didn't have a library in Uganda. So <laughs> that's why We went to the same school. <laughs> we didn't have a library as yeah. well. But oh, like I said, also, we don't have a big reading culture. Mm -hmm. So my next, uh, we, we haven't started the book tour yet. Okay. But I'm planning to start early next year because I'm pursuing my master's right now. So early next year, we're starting the book tours uh, around schools in Uganda. So mm -hmm. I want to equip these students and yeah. their libraries to study, to read, 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 read. And that's why I'm actually uh, looking for people that can donate this book to different schools because I cannot do this alone. Mm -hmm. Like people can say, okay, we're going to donate like maybe 100 copies to what, I mean, what primary school. Perfect. Because I want to... Uh, to encourage a culture of reading, because imagine if I had read such information from a book, mm -hmm. I would have been wiser enough to know that, okay, in case I find myself in a situation like this, this is how I get out. This is how I escape, yeah. right? So, but because I had no idea, I had to figure it out and I found good that I did in a way. So mm -hmm. I hope that we can, you know, pass on the reading culture. Yeah, uh, actually my dad adopted seven little girls they're younger um but i think i'm gonna buy books for each one of them because i want them to have this this copy of that um they, they're little kids they don't know they might not even remember the story like how right but they're kids that have gone through a lot and that's the reason why my dad adopted them to bring them a home they're probably like the oldest is like eight years old so they were say like just younger but i feel like when they grow up i want them to read something like this so i'll reach out to you and get you have these books in uganda right yeah they're in uganda they're actually forty thousand. they okay. are at aristok aristok bookstore yeah. mm -hmm. the biggest bookstore in uganda so at any branch you can get them yeah aristok but i'll waste some middle of it but yeah I'll, uh people who are in uganda if you want to get copies of the book you know where to find it and i'll go i'm planning to go to uganda in a few months here so i'll get some books there they, so the reason why I asked you if you used to read when you were younger, because in the book, there's a line where Nancy gifts you a book. Nancy, I think Nancy was yeah, a good friend of yours. Nancy, Nancy, sorry. Yeah, Nancy gave me a book as a gift. And the book was titled Becoming and was written by Michelle Obama. So was yeah. that your first book you ever read or it was part of the books you've read? It was. It is part of the books I've read. It wasn't my first book, but she insisted. She she lived here in Dubai, and we went to uni together. We yeah. did our first year together. So when I became, when I came back at Miss Uganda, and the university uh, welcomed me, and you know, as a gift, she yeah. gifted me uh, "Becoming" by Michelle Obama, and she wrote a note there that she wanted. She was so proud of my story, and she wanted me to share my story one time. You know, when I was ready, obviously she encouraged me to read because she knew that I, I wasn't big on reading. Mm -hmm. So Becoming, honestly, was the first book that I read from point A to Z because of her. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I love the story. And I feel like actually me and Michelle have a lot in common, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's only that she grew up in the, in the United States, in Chicago. And I grew up in Kawempe in Uganda. But when you look at our stories, the inspiration that we draw, and I was like, if Michelle can do it, why can't I? Yeah. You know? So Nicey was that one friend that really gave me the push and got me into the reading culture. And that's why I want to pass it on and give books to people and encourage them to read. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I got to say, this was 
the f- one of the few books I've ever read from the beginning to the end. I'm not a reader. I really? but I read this book <laughs> and I was telling the people I was with because the people saw me reading. I was like, "Hey, money, we've never seen you read." I'm like, "This is the kind of stuff I like." I'm not a reader, <laughs> but like reading this, it caught my attention. And this is a book like Oh, thank you. And I have uh, I have my page marker or well, like every page I would go where is it this thing right here so I'll put it where I stopped and then if I'm doing something then I'll start from there but um I, if you don't mind me asking how long did it take you to finish the book two days oh good I did two days and that's because I was busy and but I uh, yeah it took me two days and it was it was exciting because I love stories and I discovered like I'm gonna start reading people's uh is it called memoir like biography and memoir, so, yeah, yeah. Because that's something I like. And there are people I look up to that I want to read their journey, like Kevin Hart. And I know they've written these books. And that's something that interests me. Even like my podcast, it's the stories that I share. People come here and they share their stories. Like I was telling you, the first time I had on here, you shared some of the things that were in the book, which this explains. Like this is something I like. This is something I'm interested in. And um, I found the line that uh, I talked about, you forgiving your dad, which I really liked. I understand that certain things happen happen to a person. No, let me read it again. I understand that certain things happen to the, a person that might not be in control of that circumstance, and I just meant to be their way. Once I understood that, I forgave him. Like I think you were talking about the things that happened and circumstances that came with it. And once you understood that, you can yeah. piss with it and like uh forgive him there's a lot of good stuff in here if if i'm to go like word by word the things i i picked out <laughs> it was it was amazing and um the other thing was we were not rich but we we're a family that really loved being together people forget yeah. that in life um I was not rich. Well, I didn't grow up in a rich family. Most of us, a lot of us did not grow up in a rich yeah. family, but you have goals you want to achieve and there are things you want to change. Like even if you didn't grow up rich, it doesn't mean you're not going to be rich when you grow up. Like it's just exactly. a mentality. So that's what I liked. I highlighted that because I wanted the kids. Oh, no, I call them kids. I'm sorry. I just, that's easier for me. I want the people to know that it doesn't matter what situation you're in at that time. Everything can change. Like, like right now, it doesn't matter what happened to me ten years ago. Like when I was little, right now I'm I'm rechanging my life. I have my own house. I have my own job. I have my own family. I have my own. Like you can rechange that story. The situation you're in right now does not define who you are, and that's, that's I like that. I yeah. like that. Thank you. Uh huh. So I'm gonna <laughs> switch gears here. There's a part mm-hmm. I want to ask you about. <laughs> the part that made me laugh when I was reading the book was the part where you're talking about your boyfriend. Because I don't think that's something you talk about a lot or your personal life. And this was years ago. It's not like current or anything. But when yeah. I was reading that, I was like, I can't imagine. Oliver doesn't talk about her personal life or anything. But like the, just so you say, I sometimes went to see my boyfriend would sit under the shade of the orange tree and just talk and laugh and eat candy. And you are sharing that because that was taking the minds off your auntie who you used to live with. Just let's revisit yeah. that moment, like <laughs> the process of you finding that boyfriend. You know, I don't know what else I would call him. I think he was my boyfriend. Yeah. And actually, you talk about that in the book. Like you, you didn't know what to call him, but you just let's just go with boyfriend. Exactly. And I also, I chose to talk about this because it's very common right now uh, in this modern age. Uh, high schoolers have boyfriends or girlfriends. It doesn't, it's not sexual sometimes, but it's just that one friend, that, mm-hmm. you know. So I had, I met this guy and, you know, he was just giving me the comfort because at home I was so stressed out with everything that was going on. So every time I come to him, he didn't know, he had, he had no idea that I was going through what I was going through. But he was that one person that was always there for me. Like if I need, like, you know, eclairs, the candy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know eclairs. Mm-hmm. Eclairs were a thing. I don't know if they're still a thing right now, but mm-hmm. they were a thing during the that time. The chocolate candy. He used yeah. to buy me so, so many of those and come with the other snacks. And he was really, really always there for me. Yeah. So that was my boyfriend, but I really, like you said, I don't, I don't talk about like 
in depth about like my relationship, yeah. especially like now. Yeah. I'm very secretive. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I chose to talk about him because really, like, there was absolutely nothing. And Where is he? At? Where is he at now? I think he's still. I don't know. I think he's still there somewhere. <laughs> Poor guy. I don't I, know. Honestly, I I hope he finds this book. Maybe he will revisit some of his memories too. But no, that that that's a part that I when I read it obviously brought memories back because all of us live that kind of life in high school. So you also get to yeah. remember your old boyfriend, girlfriend, but in my school, like you can't have a boyfriend. <laughs> it's like the we used to hang out at a place near the church. It was actually in a church compound because yeah. I was like, I was in the village anyway. Yeah. So it was in a church compound and there was, a, there was so many beautiful uh, fruits, trees and stuff like that. So we could just sit there and get the shade and sometimes we'd read Sometimes we just talk about stuff. It yeah. was it was just, you know, us being kids, you know. No, it's definitely yeah. it's definitely good memories, you know. Everybody, all of us did it. Um I wanna ask you, is there any book that you've read before that made you cry? Mm, no. No. Because I feel like, I, I mean, I didn't cry, but like when I was reading your book, some parts were like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine living that. Especially like, and this is where I connect with your book a lot. I might not have gone through the same situations you went through, but there's some things in there that you can connect with. Like living with aunties or living in an, another person's home. You know, you don't belong there and they make you work. You know, you're supposed to take care of of everybody in the house you're supposed to focus on school you know like things like that those are some of the things i read and i was like that's that that's yeah that it sense. happens a lot especially in, when you when you're coming from a broken home and you are your parent that the one you have like my mom she wants you to get to connect with your other relatives mm -hmm. so you end up being this festive season you are at auntie so-and-so's house the other one you are at uncle so-and-so's house yeah. and then you just all over the place. So everybody, especially our African aunties, they, they, they just want to take advantage of the fact that you are young, you're energetic. So you're going to do all the housework. We used to have a maid at home, you know, we used to, but I, I, I was the gardener, I was the cleaner, I was, and I had to go to school. It's like, oh my God, this is too much. Mm -hmm. So I was, I couldn't complain because I didn't have a phone. I, I was young and I was like, you have to do what you have yeah. to do. So on top of that, then I was trying to escape away from someone trying to harass me sexually. Mm -hmm. So I was going crazy in my head. I was like, this is enough. Yeah, I was, I, reading your book, I was reading the book and I was just thinking about your mental health, like, you know, going through a lot, like left, right yeah. and center, you know. And that's the thing that we don't think about now or like back then. You don't think about a like, kid's mental health, you know. These are the things that torture her minds. Like she has to deal with this guy, I'm Sum Wabulunaku, then she has to deal with school, then comes back home, like over oh, well, some things and all right. I call Miremo, you know, it's it's too hard on the kids. Well, I don't I don't really blame my auntie because she had no idea that someone was trying to harass me sexually. Mm -hmm. But I had to deal with all this and honestly speaking, I I was a smart kid. Yeah. But this year I performed horrible, like yeah. horribly bad. Because I was dealing with so much into my head and I, I didn't know how to balance which and you know, stay safe at the same time. So anyways, yeah. let's not expose whatever happened I in know. the book so that people can Pe get people to... need to buy. But the one <laughs> one thing I'm not gonna expose more, but one thing I wanted to talk about and I want people to okay. go read it. It was uh basketball. I've already seen you and like you talk about your height and how tall you are, like I'd never thought like you played basketball, but that was fun to read. No. I no, I mean, I'm a short woman. I know, but I've never, like, even on your Instagram, I've never seen the maybe it like you playing basketball. Um, I think most of those photos or videos I archive, yeah, uh, you know, because of the brand that I'm maintaining right now, yeah. But I think if you check deep into my Facebook, you will see some pictures maybe from Middlesex University mm -hmm. when they posted and oh. they were at the time. Okay. Our competitions and won some trophies and stuff yeah. like that. I do have some medals here with okay. me. Huh. 
being a basketballer, but yes. I'm not playing anymore. Yeah. No, that's amazing because yeah. when I read it, it, was, it caught me off guard. I'm like, I should know this. Oh, I sh like you should be able to just read it, you know, but like that was, that was amazing. But yeah, like you said, I don't want to give a lot away, but I want to touch on some highlights, some of the things uh, maybe people who listen, like... I might not look at it as giving away, but like some of the things, if you have somebody you care about, somebody that you know goes through some of the things we might hit on, it's it's a good book for those people to read. It's a source of encouragement. It could be a lesson because you're putting your story out. It's you want another person to maybe avoid the same mistakes that you, you went through. And it could be something somebody could read. And that's why I want to buy these the books for those little girls back home so they can read that maybe in, in life. Even my daughter, I'm going to save this. When she grows up, she will read, read that. Um, how long, yeah, you already talked about that, how long it took you to um, to write. To, to pr How was the publishing process? Like it's it's something that I say, I thought about like, how did you get into like publishing? publishing process and how did that go uh well i i would be very mean if i don't mention that i do have a team i have an amazing team and uh and the and the in this book actually they did inspire me to share my story a lot uh at the beginning of the book i mentioned them mr obi and uh, uh, susan okoye they are they have been a part of my team not just on this book project. So when it comes to dealing with the technical stuff and how do we gonna how are we gonna put the book out there, how are we gonna market the book and how are we gonna put it on all these platforms, Amazon and all that, they are the ones that are responsible. Mm -hmm. So my team has been behind that and they made sure that publishing goes because the process is really not that it's not that hard. Right. If you have a good product mm -hmm. And they review it and it passes the review check you're good to go so they handled everything for me and i, I remember getting the news of like oh we've been published on amazon i was actually flying back home to uganda and then i was at the airport and i'm like oh my god yes i couldn't contain my excitement already i had a printed copy but mm -hmm. it wasn't like available to anyone mm -hmm. so getting the news i was like okay i need to take a picture with this book right now on this flight and tell everybody that we've been published on amazon yeah. So, and I think you remember the first picture that I showed the yeah, book. I was on yeah, I remember and that. I wasn't feeling well because I had, my eyes were paining me. And I remember even just talking to a stranger and I tell him, excuse me, you mind taking a picture of me? This is my book. That I was so excited. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So no, he I'll... actually ended up buying uh -huh. a copy. Of oh, really? No, I was excited yeah. when I saw it. Cause yeah, I remember I, I reposted it in my story because I was so excited that I'm like, I love to see other people win and like i was like i couldn't wait that's why that very day when you say they were available on amazon i was like i need it and i ordered it right away <laughs> they brought it on uh, at my house i think you're one of the first people that ordered yeah. from amazon yeah <laughs> no that is i wanted to support but not also not only that i love like i was saying i love reading about people's stories and i feel like this is something that is impactful the reason that I love even doing the podcast about people's lives is because I love listening to other people talk about their life. And I feel like when they share that, even in words, like in the book, it's going to impact another person's life. And I want to be the first person to like benefit me first. And then another person will listen to it too. And they, they benefit from that. And I think there's a line that I want to end with on the book, part of the book. I say, as long as you have life, it's not over yet, either bad or good. I don't know if that was in the book or I read it somewhere. I, I can't remember, but I wrote it down on my notes and I might have read it somewhere. And that's what did you say? As long as you have life? As long as you have life, it's not over yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in the book. Yeah, because that stood yeah. out to me and I, I remind people that. The reason why I wrote this down here, there's a lot of friends. I have like friends, people we know that life hits them hard, like really hard. Things that we, we cannot even think about or we've not gone through, imagine. But that's a reminder for me that as long as you have life, you can change things. But some people resort to taking their own lives and hanging themselves. That's that's not going to change. And I, I don't want to downplay what they're going through, but just a reminder that taking your own life does not, it won't. Healthy. Some people might think like, okay, if I take my life, I'm not going to 
go through pain again. But this was a reminder for me that when you have life, it's not over yet and something can change. Would you want to add on to that on the line? Yeah, because for me, uh, like the hardest part, especially like what I shared in the book uh, during my life was when I lost my mom. This was the line because that point, I, I didn't know how to react. I didn't know who I was. I, I was only 18 and really 18 looking back, I was a baby. So I was at the point of like, what do I do with my life? But um, my siblings and I had to choose uh, between either we get strong and go through it or you get eaten into it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you die, your soul is going to die, your heart is going to die, your mind is going to die because you can't get out of this moment. So I found God that I decided to get out of that moment. And I said, you know what, this happened and I'm going to rise above it. Because at the end of the day, you, you realize you can't really do anything to get back alive or change the situation but the best thing you can do is to just show up and be better because this is going to make her even happier right mm -hmm. so for me it was like okay the fact that i'm still alive i nothing is gonna you know i'm gonna move on with my life and this is how i'm gonna make her proud mm -hmm. so yeah and that's the reason why i like when you people when when you share your story because somebody might be going through that right now but say this person went through it and Kachida Bawali, she's doing like this. They get hope. That gives them hope. Yeah. And that's why exactly. I really like people sharing their stories out there to give hope to another child. Chai Tamu at this point. We might not yeah. know how we're gonna survive, but when you see somebody who did, it gives you hope. Like I'm I'll survive. So but yeah, once again, this was a very good book. But a few questions I'm gonna ask you before I let you go. Yes, any, sure. Any any pageantry coming up? Anything? Any plans? Big projects coming up? Pageantry from me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm oh yeah, I'm already retired. <laughs> no, I'm retired. Oh really? <laughs> no, I'm done. We have a lot of amazing girls uh, out there in Uganda that are, you know brilliant that want to pick up the space. So I want to create. A space for them to just you know go through i don't want to be blocking any, anyone's opportunities i think i have really done enough of pageantry and i've uh, waved the flag really high i think that's enough so i want someone to take over from that and then we we just for me i'll be there as a support system mm -hmm. to just you know push her yeah. yeah so i'm done with pageantry but obviously with any new projects i think you remember when i was when you were asking for, oh, let's do another podcast, I was like, wait, there is something that is coming. Mm -hmm. And I didn't disclose. And yeah. then I showed the book. So like that, I'm not going to disclose anything. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember. <laughs> now, yeah, that, that <laughs> comes back. Yeah, because I, I reached out to you. I was like, there's something coming. Just wait. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was still in the process of like, should I release it? Should I not? Yeah. <laughs> That's... So anyways, I'm not going to disclose any uh, future uh, plans. But trust me, I, I think everyone knows that I'm always hardworking on mm -hmm. something and some things are coming very soon. But obviously, uh, this month I'm going to be in uh, Boston. Boston. I'm hosting the Parker Runway. So these are the things I'm doing right now, hosting events, um, modeling and all that stuff. Yeah. USA, yeah. USA. We're happy to have you. Um, so sad that yeah. I might not make it, but I wish I knew I would have flown to Boston. Actually, I have my aunt in Boston living there who I've never even met. So that would have been a great opportunity to come up there. But Oliver, once again, I appreciate, I'm thankful to have you on the podcast. Every time I get an opportunity to sit down, to talk to you, I love it. And, uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say some last words if, in case you're going to say goodbye very soon. Um, I want people to really support the Escape and uh, check it out on Amazon. It's available. And also, if you're in Uganda, you can grab it at Aristoc Bookstores. It's only 40,000 shilling in Uganda. And all, all the profits from this book, all of it is going to support the Oliver Nakakani Foundation. So basically supporting teenage mothers and give them a second chance to go back to school. So we're not making any profit from this. It's really a part of my foundation to just give back to the community and inspire 
and encourage for education and reading. So please support the book. Thank you. Yeah, Muli de. But no, yeah, that's uh I'm I'm happy that you do this. It's something I'm passionate about. I love it for the fact that it's helping somebody else. It's helping changing people's lives. It's everything. Everything about the book. It's even for us who like you would say, oh, Katinzaki no Chigu, am I benefiting? But like change my life, perspective of things, how I see things. And then it's going to help another child to be able to go to school. It's going to help another child to get hope. So wherever you look, you look, whatever angle you look at, you look at it, it's helping and adding to the community. So remind Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Ask me a question. <laughs> Reading the book as you have read the whole book, mm -hmm. did it affect or change a way that you see me in a way? No. Um, it's it did in a way that I gave you so much respect. I mean, it's not that I was not respecting you before, but like after reading the book, like there's a level I put you in number. I respect her for everything she's gone through, and being able to come out like that, or like talking about like you say this in the beginning, like opening your heart out. There are some of the things in Zenganze I might not have being able to just go yeah. through or like to even but like you going through <laughs> what I read from the book I respect you and that just so much respect and I appreciate even the single work you do because some people don't think about you respect them to get to where they are so like that's how for me the book changed I mean, I was really respecting you because of the things you've done, things you've achieved, mm -hmm. but then that moved to another level of respect again, but from mm -hmm. the back. Because now with the risk, okay, I'll explain this. With the respect I had for you was for the things I see on Instagram, the things I see you do right now, but I didn't know the right. things that you went through from the back. But now that I know right. the things you went through from the back, that even adds another layer of respect for you to be able to do what you're doing now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I thank God for, you know, for taking me through all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you also have your story, yeah. which maybe if I get to know, I would be extremely proud. And Actually, that's know. the other thing. When I read your book, I was like, I think I should write my story. I think I should write. Cause... And I'll be the first person <laughs> to get a copy of that. Because the funny part is, when I came to it, my story is pretty crazy. And I've told it to a lot of people. Most of my story is not about my childhood, but I liked how you intervened from your childhood to where you are at. I liked that. But like most of the stuff that has happened to me a lot in my life was from my family and when I made the decision to move to America with no help, yeah. with no support. With I moved to America with like $100 in my pocket. And wow. that $100. Oh my God, I saw the photo that you posted. I'm like, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they brought me to like Los Angeles, and that's where I came out. Even you see, you meet that guy right now, you don't recognize each other. I know, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> but the funny part is, like, if you see that picture, the cart I was using, I had one suitcase. Suitcase, I It was, I had ten clothes, and those were my best clothes in Naina, like at the time when I moved. And I remember pulling it out, and I was coming for school here. The white guy told me. Are your parents shipping you another ba other bags for college? I was like, no, this is what I have between me and death. Like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> but like, my story is crazy, and that's why uh, and that was the original thing of why I did a podcast to just share bits and bits of my story when I talk to people. Like now, when we talked about it, I shared like a hint, but there's a whole story of that to even where I'm at now. That. I'm not yeah. yet where I need to be, but at least I've been able to get to a place. Like, not Jamal America, I was sleeping on people's couches, like in their houses. Wow. I, yeah. But like now to this point, you know, like I bought my own house in the US and buying That's a house. When, and when like, I shared that on my Instagram one day, the day I bought my house, because I was like, I can't believe like I now have my own yeah. house. Like it's, it's, it's an achievement. So. I can't wait. I can't wait. You inspired me. Uh, lastly, before mm -hmm. we go, 
I want to say that that what you just said right there is the same exact reason why I chose this cover. I know we didn't talk about the book cover, mm -hmm. but the reason why I chose this cover because you know it's a picture, it's a powerful picture of me with the crown, and I wanted people to look at this picture and like the escape. How did she, what did she run from? Because she is like she mm -hmm. has a crown, she overcame, and she's. Miss Uganda. So I wanted people to be like, okay, we want to get to know about what she had to escape yeah. to, to get to where she is right now. And also this image represents that, represent literally how far I've come mm -hmm. and then where I am right now. So it's like an inspirational kind of cover. That's why I chose this. Nice. Actually, <laughs> it's the funny thing. I had that question on here, but I skipped it because I was like, oh, that's definitely obvious. But I, oh, really? I skipped it because I was going, we're going to talk about the book cover and the title, like how you came to yeah. the title. But I skipped it. But I'm glad you brought it up and talked about it. One last thing. <laughs> I talked to you on Instagram about getting me someone. Um, I'm looking for, I even messaged you know, Bino Jabi Salam, but I messaged the Miss Uganda official because I wanted to interview Helen. Um, on on the podcast, Hannah. Huh? Yeah, Hannah, yeah, Hannah. You know, yeah, Helen. No, no, Helen. But yeah, I, I reached out to the Miss Uganda official. So I think somebody gave me a number of uh, Mrs. B. You call you call her Mrs. B. Uh -huh. Mama, uh, Miss, Mama B. Miss B. Yeah, somebody gave me a number. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, you had an assignment to to connect to me there. No, I did actually. Uh, uh, I I I did my part of the assignment. Yeah, but wasn't very positive okay uh but um i don't know maybe we should uh wait a little yeah, bit just i don't know that's that's the thing but I, at the end of the day yeah. it's it's a personal decision right. you know someone can choose to like okay let's do it yeah like i i always my my arms are always open i'm mm -hmm. like okay any opportunity that comes to me i'm gonna grab it right but also i do understand like being miss uganda when you're like raining there's so much responsibility mm -hmm. there's so much to do and yeah and she hasn't gotten time yet so i i passed on the message but uh she wasn't, I think she wasn't available. Yeah. No, I definitely <laughs> understand. And that's one thing I don't do on the podcast is to force somebody because you never want to force a conversation. Teva, you will want. Like if, if you trust force. me after this podcast, she will come back. <laughs> Kari. Yeah, she will. Oliver. She's actually in Dubai right now. She's on I, vacation. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I, I follow her. So I saw the pictures on there. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely amazing. And I appreciate I'm thankful for you for giving me the time. I know it's busy. We had to figure out where to record, when to record, but I'm, I'm excited that you gave you know, me the time. No, I think content. it worked out perfect that we didn't do an Instagram live because Why? usually the comments pop up. I know, and I'm like, getting oh, distracted, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I think this is more like a chat, one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one uh, you know, kind of conversation. I think it yeah. worked out perfect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I'm excited. Um, your number one fan here. Anything you do, anything, I, I look up to you. I appreciate everything you do for the country, for the girls. Bulishimu Chokola, you just know there is a fan here. Now, over, bo 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 but about okay. in America, usually I have a place where I go to make them and I ship them to their houses. But people who are outside the countries, I have, I'll send you a link and see if, how easy you can get it. Because I know some people in, in Dubai can buy. Oh, yeah, in Boston. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in Boston. You can, when you get to Boston, let me know. It, you can get it. It's like, I think it's between two and three days. You can get it. Okay. So if it's between two and three days, then we have to place the order now because yeah. my flight is two days. Let me know what, what what you need and then I'll make it an energy where is that going to your what address. Send me the address where you're gonna be, where you think I, I should okay. send it to, and then I can do that on my end. So when, when you get here, it will be there. I'll buy it How for you. To pay for it. Do I pay for it or mine? <laughs> <laughs> Just send me the How color the you want. Support? <laughs> it's fine. You're already supported. When you come to my podcast, you've okay. supported. So I appreciate that. Thank you very that. much. I really yeah. appreciate. Kali, Oliver, I'll let you go. I'll edit this, and then I'm gonna find a time. Baby, Bonda, baby, Matama. Baby, yeah, Eva, yeah, say yeah. Not Isla, Isla, Kate Kibuka. Isla, like, I like it's like uh, how you pronounce island. It's I S L A. 
I want to be singing with Ghana with Isla. Man, guys, it's like it's Isla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Isla. Actually, one Arabic word between Isla, it's A Y double L A. Really? Yeah, some people spell it like that, but mine I spelled it like I S L A. Isla K. I made the name is K. I mean, we shot it to K, but it's like K A Y. So that, mm. uh, okay. Please send my uh, kisses to her and also the mom, uh, Mrs. Chibuka. Mrs. Chibuka. Kali. Uh, thank you very much, Oliver. It's been a blessing to talk to you. Uh, Take care. Bye bye. Hey there, uh, this is Bonnie Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching and listening to my podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with a friend and recommend somebody to this podcast. Don't forget to leave a feedback on this podcast because that's how we grow. And also don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. Join us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much and be blessed.